Another well-known application of the regression discontinuity is to the following question. Will people pay more to live in good school districts? Or put differently, what is the effect of school quality on house prices? So in the traditional system in the US, you go to the school that you're zoned for. You live in a particular place, and your house is zoned for a certain elementary school, middle school, and high school, and your kids go to those schools. Now, we also know that there's variation quality across schools. Some schools have high test scores, some schools have low test scores, et cetera, et cetera. So do people pay more to live in a, by a good school? And if they do, how much more will they pay? Well, answering that question is what Sandra Black did in this, her 1999 paper. Here's her idea. She took cities like this, Melrose in Massachusetts, near Boston, and this is a map of the city. You can see we've got streets on these little uh, lines here, and then we've got attendance district borders drawn in solid lines. So this is one school zone. This is another school zone here, 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 and here. These are all different school zones. So the basic idea is that if we look at houses close to this border, for example, then they're going to be pretty similar, you know, probably in, in the same neighborhoods. They're going to have similar local amenities. They're both close to a park, maybe, or they're both close to the convenience store. But the, school, the houses on this side of the border are zoned for this school, whereas the houses on this side of the border are zoned for this school. So let's say this school up here is a very high-quality school, and this school down here is a very low-quality school. Then our running variable here is distance to the border, and the cutoff here is exactly the border. If you're on this side of the border, then you get treated with the high-quality school. If you're on this side of the border, you don't get the high-quality school. You get the lower-quality school. And our assumption, the RDD assumption, is that houses very close to the border are basically the same. There's no systematic difference between a house on this side and a house on this side, except that this one's going to the good school and this one's going to the bad school, relatively bad school. So then what we can do is combine this data, this uh, geographic information system data, um, these maps, with outcome data data on what's the house prices. What are the prices of all the houses that are over here and the prices of the houses here? So we can just look at the average prices of houses on this side of the border and compare it to average houses here on that side of the border. Any difference in those average prices is solely attributed to the fact that the test scores, the school quality is higher here than it is here. That's the main idea behind this regression analysis in Sandra Black's paper. Now, in order to implement this, it's a little bit more complicated, as you can see, compared to the test score example. We just had one test score for everybody. Here we've got this distance to the border example. I have these different lines all over the place. We've got a bunch of different groups we could compare. So the way she's going to implement this is by using a particular kind of regression analysis that is basically based on this regression uh, discontinuity idea. So let's look at that next.